What's up everyone? Welcome back. Okay, so my buddy Sean uh, recently bought a X card by Inventables, which is the same CNC machine that I use. Um, he bought his machine uh, in order to do the same thing that I do, kind of get into a guitar building. Um, and uh, we've been talking a little bit back and forth. And uh, he's been using, um, I think he said Fusion 360 and has imported the the file for the body and the neck and stuff into easel and um asked if he could send me over the file so i could take a look and, and see what i thought and see if there's anything that i would i could help with and of course i love doing stuff like that uh easel to me i know it gets a bad rap and it, you know it isn't the best well that's fine uh but it can be a great tool. So I took this file and kind of worked through it. And uh, I'm going to show you guys what I did with this file uh, and how we're going to use easel to design um, a thin line Telecaster style guitar build. So check it out. Here we go. All right. So I've got his uh, file all loaded up here and I've started seeing that the body you can see on the on the preview there and in this one as well there's some some lines that are not showing up in the preview um, I also noticed uh, this one the body outline is not showing up um, there's just a couple of things that I, I notice here that just aren't um, aren't right and I'm not really sure if that's something to do with uh, the way fusion um, inputs things um, the other thing I noticed is there's a lot of different um, steps all down through here different uh, processes so um, what I did was uh, I went ahead and was trying to figure out why um, so I zoomed in um, I changed the you know cut from on the path to outside the path and I noticed that it thickened and if you grab one of the uh, endpoints there and pull it out you can see there that it's starting to actually show so I think with fusion I'm not positive but I think with fusion um, when it imports it in, it imports it as one solid line but there the imports cross or the the end points cross over somehow so I'm not really sure uh, what quite happened um, uh, with like I said with fusion I'm I'm not real sure but by pulling these endpoints out you can see that there's two distinctive lines there's an inside line and an outside line uh, because now it is showing up so I went ahead and started basically kind of a new one. I put in the same uh, body blank dimensions as you can see here. And then uh, kind of did the same thing, jumped over to Electric Herald. Uh, we did this in the other easel video tutorial that I did. Uh, I went to uh, Telecaster Thinline Bodies and went ahead and downloaded. Um, now with these, it's got all the different routes, all the different things that you need. Um, for thin line bodies so we went ahead and and did that we jumped over to cloud convert and converted it which if you need a refresher on this go back and watch my other video on designing a stratocaster body in easel so now that we went ahead and did that we uh, come back over here um, we're gonna uh, import the dxf uh, upload the file we're going to select the files to upload. Um, now, it doesn't show it on here, but it's showing um, because of the the uh, program that I'm using. But you can see now that it's loading up the Fender Telecaster uh, Thinline bodies. Now, the downside is uh, to using that particular one. It takes all of the different um, files and puts it into one page so there's like seven or something different uh actual files here if you look um and we sc scroll down uh in the thin line bodies there's multiple bodies here 
uh, there's, let's see, quite a few pages as you can see. But what it does is it layers it all on top of each one. Um, so there's five different bodies, or what is that, six different bodies. Uh, and all the hashtag lines or the, the, um, the, the lineup lines, uh, they're all put into one single page when you do the, the DXF import. So as you can see here, there's a ton of different stuff, but we only need one. Unfortunately, we got to download them all as one file, and we can go in and start erasing uh, the lines that we don't need. Um, so basically, we got to figure out, okay, which ones of these do we not need? We don't need any of the the uh, the lines here. We don't need any of these lines here. So we'll highlight and delete, and then we're basically left with, uh, well, six different body outlines. Um, now, one thing we can do that I always do is I always change it down to a real small uh, bit so that the line itself is smaller, so we can see kind of more what we're working with because the uh, previews show the cuts based on the bit size. So when we zoom in here, we can see there is a ton of stuff. Um, there is uh, a body that's backwards, as you can see right there, which is totally fine. We're gonna go ahead and start getting rid of all of this stuff that we don't need and leaving just what we need. So let's go ahead and speed up this process right here. Okay, so it was about here that I started realizing that I really only need basically the body outline at this point. You take all this stuff out, um, but what I started realizing is if I jump over here to Sean's files, um, he already has a, um, a, a, a page here or a work piece that kind of has what he's already wanting. Um, it's just the, the body shape is not showing up. So basically I've realized I can delete basically all of this um, except for I'm going to, uh, well, actually, no, I just need the body shape. So I can delete everything but the body. And I can see now over here in the preview that uh, my body is showing up, my body outline is showing up. Um, his is still, like I said, I'm still kind of confused as to how um, what's called uh, Fusion is uh, importing it. Um, I think I think that's the reason that was going on. So I went ahead and was trying some different things. I, I noticed that the, the neck pocket um, is kind of all one piece. So, uh, it, it, it's the neck pocket is included in the body piece, which is, like I said, it's kind of weird. Not really sure why fusion, uh, did it the way it, it did, but, um, what we can do to fix that is basically we're going to take these two, uh, hollowed out pieces basically, um, and make sure, well, first let's go ahead and line up everything to a zero. And uh, come over to our body piece. Line up everything to a zero, zero. Like so. Alright, and then we can um, now come over to Sean's. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to copy uh, this piece here. As well as this piece here. And... Uh, that piece there. So those are
basically the um, the hollow pieces. So we'll copy and paste, make sure the paste works. And we'll come back over here and paste it. Ta-da, now we got a body uh, with the, um, the hollow parts. Now, like I said, I'm still kind of confused with this guy. However, I did know uh, that by adjusting the endpoints of that guy, um, if you remember from what I was showing you before, uh, there's two different things. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just come over here. I'll grab an endpoint. Let's zoom in here. Uh, all right. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and adjust endpoints. And we'll grab an inside one. And we'll just start pressing delete a whole bunch of times. Because you can see that there is a ton of endpoints in each one of these little um, curves basically each curve is an endpoint so I thought well I'll just start deleting all these and we'll end up with something we can work with um, now I did remember as well that uh, I don't have to do it this way I can actually uh, kind of make things a little bit easier on myself but uh i kept trying this for a minute until i realized that uh the pdf that we used we can actually um go back and take that uh from the pdf um and use that one however uh i don't know that i i don't think i did that actually um i think i actually deleted all of these endpoints Um, so actually, no, I didn't. Okay. So yeah, basically I erased this, went back over here. Uh, I did make a duplicate copy. Um, but I just basically, I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it and, uh, paste it over here. And now it's a solid piece here, but we can take this and move it into the correct location. And change the uh, cut path to uh, clearing out a pocket. We'll reset the depth there. And now we have the right shape right where it needs to be. So this one's uh, Sean's. So what I did is I came over here, found out the, um, the placement, and I'm going to enter the same placement as his so that it's in the uh, correct positioning. So now you can see it is in the same positioning. Once I get this changed between Sean's and mine, it's now in the same position. So next step. All right, so I went ahead and adjusted the body depths a little bit, and uh, now we're gonna jump over to um, Sean's files here and uh, take a look at the next step, which we're gonna go ahead and uh, tackle uh, the neck um, and get all of that kind of sorted out and si situated. Um, I went ahead and looked through, uh, made sure that, you know, the, the width of uh, the neck pocket and stuff. Actually, I think I'm going to do the neck pocket first. Um, making sure that his, uh, his neck uh, pocket uh, is the right width um, for a certain thing. I'm also looking to see about maybe trying to figure out what's going on with this, uh, this SS SVG file. Like I said, uh, I'm... I, I don't use um, Fusion 360 a lot, so I'm not real sure of their uh, imports and ex export uh, methods. So um, one of the things I did is I jumped over here, back over here to um, Electric Herald, and uh, came over and grabbed this guy here, which is a Telecaster uh, neck um that should help us uh get 
everything um, to cor the correct dimensions and everything. Um, but we are still going to use uh, his headstock um, design and everything. But this is going to give me, uh, you know, make sure that the, the dimensions on the heel are at the correct, um, usually 56 millimeters. Uh, it's got the correct 25 and a half inch scale length. Um, it's basically got basically everything ready to go. So we'll go ahead and download this guy. Um, we'll do the Convertio as well and uh, convert it to a DXF so that when we jump back over to Easel, we can go ahead and DXF. Um, I'm going to edit that. So what we'll do is we'll jump back over here to the DXF um, or the easel and import this guy here that we're now downloading the Fender Telecaster Neck PDF to DXF. So now what we'll do is come back up over here to easel. Um, we're going to add a new work piece. Import uh, DXF. Upload file, we'll select file to upload, we'll select it, um, and we will import this bad boy here. Now when we import it, uh, it's upside down, which is totally fine, um, but it is all to scale. So everything is the correct size that we need. The only thing we really got to do is flip it the right side up or horizontal or whichever way we choose to work with it. So we don't need these two pieces here. We'll go ahead and de delete those. And I'm going to flip this around um, so it's facing up instead of down. And um, there's a few ways you can do this. You can pull the neck away from itself. Um, you can uh, remove each line, um, which these lines here are all your uh, fret slots that you're going to use. So uh, I don't believe I did this one in the uh, Stratocaster vi video. So I may come back and do a separate uh, neck uh, profile um, video, but Kind of the same idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over here to Sean's. Now Sean's uh, file here, um, he's got a few different things um, that can be all combined down into uh, one single process, basically. Uh, we're going to change the dimensions to, to the same dimensions that he has. And then we can line this guy up. Uh, we're going to center to material so now we have our neck profile and and everything that is needed on there now with Sean's um, he's got a couple extra lines here that that line there is is to create that's where the swoop is going to start um, and we don't want to erase anything off of his but we do want to um, I tried a couple different things. I, I went ahead and did combine, and that gave me uh, basically an actual profile, which now I can zoom in here where this uh, nut line is, and I found out that um, it is uh, separated there. So I can actually just delete that, and I now have the neck profile for his profile. Uh, obviously we always want to cut outside the shape so it is to the correct dimensions. Um, one thing I did notice uh, is that his uh, heel style is more of a, a Stratocaster style heel. It's got a curved bottom rather than a flat bottom um, like a Telecaster. So we'll go ahead and uh, center this to the material. We'll jump back over to uh, to mine here and uh, copy and paste his over here. Um, now, because I have um, 
other things in the shape, not just the uh, not just the neck profile, centering it to material. His headstock's a little bit wider, so the overall um, rectangular shape of just his is going to be a little bit different. So we can't just center it to material. Plus, this heel and my heel is a little bit different. Um, you can uh, notice uh, that I don't have a neck pocket yet, which is totally fine. We will go back into that and get that sorted out. But you can see now we've got his uh, his uh, neck profile lined up. Uh, as of right now, we don't need the uh, fret slots. What we do need is to line these up to where we can basically get everything we need to do. Uh, easiest way to do it is uh, actually let's go ahead and move this guy here. We're not we don't need the nut. Uh, we don't need the fret marker dots. We just need basically the profile. So let's go ahead and remove these two real quick. So what I'm doing here is I'm highlighting everything and then unselecting the neck profile. All right, so now we can take this guy here, overlap it, and what we do is uh, basically make sure that the, see we can't do the center to material because the, the, the headstocks themselves are a little different. So we will highlight everything here, center to material, and then uh, we'll grab, let's see here, center to material, yep, not working. Uh, all right. So we want it to basically meet completely up, but it needs to be right the the bottom of the heels need to be in the same spot um, because a strat heel can be used on a telecaster neck pocket but a telecaster neck cannot be used in a stratocaster pocket so what we will do is just line everything up to make sure it's all even and square and ready to go and then we can delete the uh, Telecaster profile leaving just Sean's neck. So the tuner holes are in the correct place and even and symmetric. And we can start working on getting everything uh, ready for that. So now with these, uh, these tuner holes, we'll select everything, deselect that, change that to a uh, clear a path so that those are actual holes now. Make sure that they are the right size, which we are looking pretty good. All right, back it out. That looks pretty good. So, all right, so with Sean's um, files here, he's got a lot of. Um, separate steps like this separate step is for the truss rod um, which can actually be done um, while you're actually doing the uh, neck profile uh, and, and it'll save time it'll save um, a little bit of uh, setup um, it, it's overall a, a bit of a time saver and it makes things a little bit easier now because this is a separate file, I'm not positive that the uh, truss rod is actually going to line up with what we have. So what we can do is we can go back over and import um, the same uh, Telecaster neck um, PDF that we downloaded from Electric Herald. And... Um, because that's going to give us where the uh, nut line is for our neck. So we'll go ahead and grab everything here. Uh, we'll grab the the, uh, 
the file here, I'll grab everything, deselect our neck and our tuning machine holes, and then we will slide all this over some so we can get just the pieces we need. So there we go. Now that that's out of the way there, we can, again, we don't need these two pieces here, so we'll just erase them. And we will take this guy here, flip it right side up again. And now we know exactly where our uh, nut is going to be. Don't need these, we'll erase those. So we just need to know where that nut is. Everything else don't really need at this current time. So we'll go ahead and highlight those, kind of drag this over here, um, erase all this, don't need it, and then we'll line up these, uh, these two. So now that we know where the absolute bottom of Sean's neck is, we can make sure that we use the absolute bottom as... Uh, a reference guide here so we can type that in so now we know exactly where our bottom is and where our nut needs to be from the absolute bottom of the heel and we can move this guy over move it over a little bit more a little bit more and what we can do now is uh, take easiest way to do it is take a line Draw a straight line, wait till it turns red. We know that's absolutely straight. And then we can type in the dimensions of our truss rod length, which 17 inch uh, truss rod. So at that point now we can say, okay, we can put it here and we know that it goes to where the tip of the truss rod adjust adjusting um, thread, or nut or whatever it is is directly below the nut so it needs to be directly below there uh, so we can see that these are matched up and we know that that nut is going to be in the exact same place as that so we can take these two get rid of those because now our um, our truss rod slot is set and ready to go so let's come back over here and let's zoom in here because there is one thing that we do need to do with the uh, end of this guy so we're going to make sure that this is pretty well centered you can take your that guy there and that guy there and make sure that they are centered so now that the truss rod is running directly down the center of your neck. Uh, we're going to grab a square right here, and we're going to make this square, um, unlock that, make sure the square is the size that we need. So we're going to adjust that. We're going to adjust this size, and then we are going to put it right there. Now. I know what you're thinking, that truss rod slot is definitely not wide enough for an actual truss rod. Um, the reason I did just a single line is because uh, I usually use a uh, one quarter inch bit to route that, which works out just perfectly because that is what... Um, the, the width that I usually use, uh, the, the width of the truss rod that I use. So now what we can do here is I had made a copy of the neck and I'm going to, um, I'm going to make the, uh, the headstock. I'm going to start a, uh, a path, a tool path that's going to actually allow us to cut the thickness of the headstock down so that we can then use our um, spindle sander to uh, get the swoop in. So if you do a, a cut on path and make it to the full depth and then grab a square here and go just up over 
where you want and you set this square um, to just where you're going to start to sand in that smoothing and set that depth to zero select both and combine you're left with just this piece now you can come over here and slap that guy right on top put your cut to uh, point two five uh, let's go ahead and send this to the back so we can see our tuning machines and if we take a look now uh, let's switch it to that quarter inch bit so I can show you um, now you can see that the truss rod slot is the correct size and if you look at the um, the headstock itself so that guy come up a little bit make it to where it's the right spot and all right a little bit of adjustment there um, the headstock you can see in in the uh, preview you can see it over here you might have to adjust it so where it's perfectly centered with the outline there you go and we can actually move it down a little bit stretch it out a little bit so it actually covers you just got to be careful that you don't stretch it too much that you're going to be left with uncut material um, like right there but you can stretch it out a little more make sure everything's covered so that when you come over and take a look now you've got a little bit of a, a ledge there but once you hit that with the spindle sander it will round out and have that perfect swoop that you're going to want and then uh, with the truss rod slot being where it is um, you can drill through to get into the access there so um, and you know actually I'm gonna go ahead and put it at uh, a eighth of an inch But we're a little less than the 0.25 because we are going to put a fretboard on top of it. Now, speaking of fretboards, I came over to, to here and Sean was asking me about the, this uh, purple square. And I noticed that it's because the um, tiling was enabled. So once you enable that, that purple square is gone. Um, with the fret slots, uh, you can use a 132nd bit. Uh, you will need to... Um, glue in your frets but I noticed that there are actually two lines on some of these so they're not quite uh, where, where they need to be however uh, came back over here uh, checked out his um, his fretboard uh, the fretboard is not bad uh, it is um, everything's lined up looks good uh, I went ahead and um, got rid of the uh, nut slot uh, checking out to make sure where we're at as far as um, the thickness is uh, make sure we're cutting on outside of the material so we can go ahead and take his uh, fretboard here and um, we are going to come over here. Uh, we will import it. We will move uh, move it over here. So, as you can see, it's pretty well the same. Um, but we are going to need to make sure that the dimensions are the exact same. We can come up. We can see the top of the, the fretboard does over a little bit into the headstock which is perfect that's exactly what we need so we can move this over and now we can uh, import our next product okay. or our next so files. now that we have um, the fretboard I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy uh, we're gonna start a new uh, workpiece copy and paste the fretboard over here 
And now that we have that, we can, let's go ahead and do another uh, import of the Telecaster neck. And we're going to do the same, uh, same thing. I'm going to import it into our workpiece, still upside down, as always. Uh, we are going to then select everything. Um, we're not going to grab that. We're going to grab, uh, basically, uh, we'll move his uh, fretboard. We'll grab everything else, delete it. We are going to uh, go ahead and grab this again and flip it over. Let's go ahead and switch bits so we can see it a little better. Turn this upside down. All right, there we go. Perfect. We will take this guy here, uh, make sure that we're uh, getting a home position because we're going to need to do the same thing that we did with the neck and make a home position for uh, the neck on this one as well so that we can actually um, have these fret slots line up perfectly with where they should be. So that puts us at the very bottom just like we should be and now we will go ahead and put that over the top perfect now we can delete this guy because we don't need it and now uh, let's go ahead and delete these as well don't need them because they're already on our neck and now when we zoom in we can see that they are ready to go. Now this is his nut slot, which we are going to leave in the same position. All we got to do is widen them so that they actually uh, reach all the way across. Uh, so we'll go ahead and grab the second one. We will widen that one up. And now we want these things to all fit together accordingly, and they do, which is perfect. Um, now, granted, the fret uh, mark, the fret dot markers, um, I am going to just go ahead and erase them because we're just going to work on the fret slots for right now. Um, now, using those one thirty second bits, they are extremely fragile. Uh, you look at them wrong and they break. So, I don't really want to do that much carving um, I, I, or that much cutting of the slots. I only want to cut uh, basically the width of the uh, fretboard. So what we can do is we can take now and highlight everything. Uh, we will grab all of it um, just so that it's all there, and then we will click this guy, and it centers everything. Everything is now centered to itself. So now what we can do is we can highlight each one of these fret slots, uh, change this over to millimeters, change the this guy to 56 millimeters, so it's only cutting across 56 millimeters, which should be the width of the uh, heel. So you do have a little bit of sprout on the nut which uh, is pretty easy let's what we can do is go ahead and take uh, just highlight or just grab these two pieces not the fretboard itself um, combine so now we have one solid piece nope we don't okay so what we're gonna do is we need to uh, make a rectangle this size right here. So we will grab this guy and our height, we will put in that dimension. And now when we highlight these, just these two, this one and not that one, not that one, that one and that one, 
we can see up here exactly where that is from the center. So we will click on this guy and type in the exact dimensions for these two. Or not dimensions, the exact location for those two. So we'll go ahead and type in the exact location. And being that these fret slots are all cut on the path, you don't want them um, not on the path outside or inside. You want them on the path. Uh, being that they're on the path, you see a little bit of overlap there, but that's uh, that's the exact center of each line, which is totally fine. So what we can do now is actually erase those two lines so that we have just the dimension of the fret slot. So we can delete that line. We can delete that line. And now what we want to do is take this guy and send it to the back. Now sending it to the back, what that does is it allows the uh, fretboard to be all the way. Now granted, this is much, much, much thicker than a fretboard. Fretboards usually are about, you know, We'll go 0.35, and the reason we're going to go 0.35 is so that we have a little bit of, of leeway so that we can radius our fretboards. So 0.35, 0.35, and we are good. So now what we're going to do, because we have our fretboard, with the appropriate slots you can see we need to send the uh, fretboard to the back so that or uh, I'm sorry send it to the front so that each one of these is pulled over now um, we have our fretboard ready to go now we don't want to really cut the profile of the fretboard with a 132nd bit. Uh, like I said, those 132nd bits are very, very fragile. So what we will do is we want to cut a profile of uh, this guy. So what we can do is we will... Uh, no, not that. We want to make a duplicate of this guy here. And then we don't need this one anymore. We'll delete that. So now we have two completely the same pieces. So we will actually erase the profile of the fretboard and go to the next one highlight everything and erase everything but the fretboard. We'll then uh, go ahead and change our bit. So we will cut the, these two pieces separately because a larger bit is going to cut a lot better. Again, always cutting on the outside of the line. So we are now at the point where we have basically a neck and a fretboard and everything that we need. And we can come back over here to this body. Um, and we can start working on the, uh, the top. So we're going to highlight everything. We want uh, want to keep the, the F hole. So we will deselect the F hole. We will also deselect the body. Oh, wrong body. That's okay. We can just flip it over um, because it is technically right in half. So we'll just grab that. Uh, we will flip it horizontally. And to that, we have a tele body with the F hole. And that is our top. Go ahead and locate this zero to zero. 
and what that does is when we go here and here we can see exactly where that F hole is going to be um, if we want we can even uh, make a quick copy and paste it over here and make sure that the F hole lines up which it does so we can delete that come back over here it's still there and uh, we have our our top basically so now that we have our neck and we have um, our our top which is about a uh, quarter of an inch thick uh, we can take this guy we're just doing quick little things here um, this one we want to cut inside so that the it's the actual outside that we see not the inside back over to this guy let's let's go ahead and put our uh, our neck pocket in next okay so we're going to go ahead and jump over here and uh, start working on this neck pocket so we're gonna go ahead and grab our neck profile and put it into a new uh, work piece and the easiest way to do this um, from what I've found is making sure that you know use the actual neck uh, profile in order to uh, make the neck pocket uh, because it's go going to be the same so we'll go ahead and do the clear path we'll grab a box and do the same thing that we did with the um, the headstock so we'll go ahead and move this up some uh, take it down to about where we we need it to be and uh, we'll go ahead and set the depth of the box to zero select both pieces and combined leaving us with just the neck pocket now this neck pocket is a little bit taller than we want it to be um, but we'll go ahead and uh, rotate it into the correct orientation here now like I said because it's a, a little bit longer than what we need it to be um, as you can see it would be way down too far into the pickup cavity so we need to actually adjust the the size of it uh, now, in order to figure out what the the uh, size should be, uh, if we jump over here, um, just do a quick uh, Google search for Stratocaster neck pocket uh, dimensions. There we go. Um, I found that uh, this one here is from Warmoth. Actually, has a lot of really good information. Uh, you can see it's three inches long, so we need to go ahead and go in and um, make our neck pocket the same. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than three inches. So the best way I've found to do that is uh, let's go ahead and delete that guy and come back over to this work piece. Now we'll put it to zero and zero just so we know where we're at now as you can see here it's 3.7 something or other so if we go ahead and do the same exact thing and uh, make it make a pocket um, okay let's go ahead and widen this guy out to the correct 55.5 millimeters so 3.7 uh, so we're gonna grab a box do the same kind of thing but this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this box in particular the uh, 0.7 whatever it is oh, not that way we'll leave that one that way this one the 0.7 whatever and what we can do now is come over here if we click on this blue dot to the right it'll show us exactly where we need to put that one so we'll go ahead and type in the same location location of zero set the cut 
depth to zero, select both, and combine. And now, uh, let's see here. Oh, I got a little in here that I didn't quite get deleted. See that little little strip right there, but that's an easy fix. You just slide it over, make sure it's covering up everything. Combined. And there we go. So now when we go over here to our shape, we can put it in and we know it's the exact right uh, dimensions. You can see there it's exactly three inches in the size. So now we come over here, we're going to line everything up right to the edge and down right to the edge of that line because that line is the outside cut of the line. And now if we go home, what we're going to do is this guy here kind of makes everything uh, even on, on the middle horizon plane. So now what we can do is take this and we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to uh, clear the pocket. We are going to grab the neck pocket and we're going to set that to a zero. Take that to full depth. And same thing. What we're going to do is make sure to zoom in here, make sure everything's covered so we can move this slightly up, slightly down, and there we go. We've got a good cover. I'm going to go ahead and put another box right here just to get that little bit of slight line out of there. We'll do the same thing, cut depth at zero. And now what we can do is uh, zoom out select all of that and hit combine and now we have our top with the neck pocket profile already cut go back to uh, cut outside the, the shape path and there we go that is ready now to be cut and glued onto the top now we can come back over to our work piece and grab another one copy and paste and paste it onto this body part here. So we'll go to this work piece, we'll copy, and we'll come back over here and hit paste. And we'll uh, go ahead and zoom in. And we can see exactly where, uh, because we copied and pasted the uh, top, we can see exactly where the neck pocket needs to be. And then we can line this all up and do the same thing uh, as far as uh, selecting uh, the where everything lines up on the horizontal plane. So we can take that top piece, erase it, good to go. Everything's lined up the way it should be. We can send that, uh, send this one to the front. Oh, not forward, front. All the way to the front. There we go. So now it's going to actually cut over the top of the neck pocket. And as you can see, that is looking pretty good. Uh, now with the, the depth um, we will go into a little bit of the, the setting, the, the depth part, uh, here. So normally if we go back over to this guy, you can see that, um, the depth here has it set to, um, oh, I forget what it is. It's like five eighths of an inch or 16 millimeters, but you got to remember too, we're going to have quarter inch sitting on top of it. So whatever we do, we're going to have to uh, subtract that quarter inch from the depth because we're actually going to be adding height to it. So 
So we come back over here. Like I said, just making sure everything I got, everything to the right, um, the right measurements of what I want. The other thing we're, we're going to need to do is go in and make sure that our neck is the right uh, dimensions as well. But we'll, we'll do that here in a minute. So we'll go ahead and do some adjusting here. And getting that all set up and ready to go for the neck. There we go. Now we have it set to the correct depth so that when we add that quarter inch on top, it'll, like I said, it'll add the height, the rest of the height, so that the neck pocket will be the correct depth. All right. So we're looking pretty good. We've got fretboard, we've got our neck, we've got our fretboard profile. Looking pretty good. All right. So when I got to this point, I was looking at the uh, the file. And I was scratching my head because something just didn't seem right. And I, I couldn't put my finger on it. And I was looking and I was looking and I was looking. And, and then it kind of it kind of dawned on me what was going on. Um, I went to Google and did just a basic Google search for... Uh, thin line telecaster body routing um, and did an image search and it kind of brought up um, other pictures and it dawned on me okay now it's making sense why things were just a little weird and not working um, there was going to be problems with uh, uh, putting the pickups in and getting them actually installed there was just a few things weird, um, but I did, uh, I reached out to Sean, uh, because I thought, well, maybe he was wanting the full hollow body, um, you know, and not use a pit guard, but I reached out to Sean and, and asked him, I said, hey man, um, you did say you were going to use a pit guard on this, and he said, yep, definitely using a pit guard, and as soon as he said that, I was like, okay, makes sense. Now I understand what's going on. I, I get where we're at. And we can make some adjustments and some, some changes here that are still going to allow us to do everything that we want to do on this build. And it just it made a little more sense. So um, I'm going to show you how we kind of fix the problem. It's a really simple solution. But uh, it's actually surprisingly a simple solution. So, uh, check this out. This is how we do it. Okay, really so simple. I was noticing this part here um, was going to be the, the trouble area where the pickups would basically go in. Like I said, he is going to be using a um, uh, a pick guard. So, it's kind of the same thing that we did with the headstock as well as the neck pocket. Just grab a quick, uh, quick box, uh, put it over the top. We're going to set the, the uh, cut depth to zero, select both of those pieces, and combine them. Uh, so now we have that semi-hollow area with this solid piece down the center that we can actually go in and put our pickup routes into, which is right here. I kind of already uh, grabbed a file, a Telecaster file that I already had, so I could grab the the pickups but we can get it out of the same DXF that we downloaded earlier um, just by deleting the things that we don't need so we can copy and paste it over here um, basically uh, we're gonna kind of make make sure that the bodies are, are correct the other body that I, I grabbed uh, I did a little bit of reshaping too so it doesn't quite fit over uh, exactly the top of uh, the file that we uh, used for this one. So we're going to go ahead and zero both out so that it's in the right 
spot and then we can zoom in and take my body out of the equation leaving just Sean's and we have now our neck pocket um, there we go got the right body out of there we have the neck pocket the pickup pockets uh, in the correct locations and we'll do the same thing on the top so that those are also in the exact right locations so that when we glue up the top they will also be in the right spot for everything And now these, we can actually change the cut to uh, inside the path. That way they're the, the right size. Um, I don't usually use uh, tabs because I glue everything down. Uh, but that is not a problem. Um, and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is make sure that everything is lined up on the uh, center horizon line. Don't need that work piece anymore. Uh, so we'll just jump back over. We don't really need this anymore. So we can delete this work piece. And we can, like I said, just uh, let's look at some stuff here. That's all good. That's all good. Neck is ready to go. Uh, the neck, I will have to um, change the, uh, the size of the blank. Uh, to get that a little more correct, but you can do that after it's cut as well. Um, so like I said, yeah, that's everything here. What you can do, like I said, is adjust these. You will want to adjust those so that they are the right um, depths because you are going to be adding, like I said, a, about a quarter inch top to the top of it. Uh, so you can see here on the display of what it's going to look like and we can zoom out there now here's where I'm going to just take everything down the center make sure that everything's lined up evenly along the horizon and we are all good we'll go ahead and do that to the top as well because you did see some a little bit of movement there but it's all right even down the center line and we'll do the same thing to the top here make sure it's all even ready to go and we are just about done with the entire file okay so um, one thing I just realized uh, that I didn't put in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in before I send over uh, basically the files back to Sean with the adjustments and stuff that I've made. Um, I didn't put in the control cavity uh, cut out into the top piece. Um, he is gonna, like I said, he is gonna be using a um, uh, a pick guard. Uh, normally with, with those pick guards, uh, it's uh, your control cavities like your or your controls um the pots like your tone pot your volume pot and your switch and stuff is usually mounted to the pick guard itself kind of like a strap pick guard but it's you know that thin line pick guard is a lot bigger um so the the thing that i didn't do is i didn't add the control cavity hole which is like this guy here um which can be made in the top itself uh, this is just a little quarter inch uh, MDF template that I've used in the past, but uh, I'll put I'll go ahead and design this in so uh, his his uh, pit guard will come up and it'll kind of go down and around like so, um, and that way his he can put his controls in there. But other than that, that is. The build that is uh, what you can do with easel and a couple of uh, simple steps. Um, one of the big things uh, with making a, a, a guitar based on something that's already been made is uh, 
research and doing um, searches for blueprints. Uh, Electric Herald, like I said, I, I've used it many, many times for a couple different builds, and uh, it's just it's an awesome resource. Um, completely not sponsored. I, all the stuff that I use is either from his free page, the stuff that he gives away for free, or I have purchased plans um, at full price, and it, it those are also awesome to use. Um, and then again, you know, one of the other things that me and him have been talking about, which will be coming in another video very soon, is sourcing all your parts. Um, so, like sourcing wood, um, sourcing uh, your truss rods, your tuning machines, your pickups. Um, I'll kind of go into detail a little bit about that on a future video. But for now, I really hope uh, you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm uh, I'm hoping that Sean can get this guitar built and uh, he said he's gonna as soon as he gets it done he'll shoot me over some video of it so I can up you, update you guys on that um, so if you enjoy this kind of stuff and you want me to do more of it please let me know leave me a comment in the uh, comments below and yeah um, make sure you hit the uh, like give me a thumbs up uh, hit the subscribe button because I do have more videos coming and uh, yeah, till then, keep building, keep having fun. See you guys next time. Bye.